Rhapsody Street Kids Believe in Santa. I have dug into the history of how this came about, and I still don't understand why. Look and you'll see the best kid in the world. <laughs> Look at me. Look and you'll see just how good I can be. The Rhapsody Street Kids aired on the WB channel back in 2002. Let me repeat that. This thing actually aired on television. Which probably ruined the Christmas of like the five people that managed to catch it. At best, this 3D abomination looks like a rough animatic of sorts to give the real animators an idea of how the action should go. But instead of giving us a cartoon that resembles, well, a cartoon, we have this. The world of someone's nightmarish delusions come to life. I don't think that line has ever been more fitting. The tale of how this barely animated 3D special came about and likely pulled in most of its voice cast is quite the strange one and hard to 100% confirm. According to the daughter of one of the creators of this J. Rose Productions, her father dumped around 500000 into this special. But I'm sure this movie had more in its budget from Nancy Cartwright. Don't have a 3D zombie robot cow, man! J. Rose Productions got involved with Colin Slater, who would end up being the director, one of the writers, and producers. And apparently J. Rose just left almost everything up to him and his Wolf Tracer company and didn't look at any of the animation after seeing the concept art. So this left them to be quite surprised at how horrid the final product was upon its TV airing. Alright, that really sucks for them, but they really should have checked on the animation at some point. I mean, at least Food Fight had the excuse of having most of its original animation stolen first. Much like Food Fight, this is a cast that seems like it shouldn't be attached to an animation that looks like it was made by some kids who barely passed their 3D animation course. And I'm sure that's where the majority of the budget for this film went. Whatever it actually was. Most notably, we have Walter Jones, who was the Black Ranger voicing Ricky. Mark Hamill, who most of you probably know as the cop at the beginning of Sleepwalkers as Eric. Paige O'Hara, who was Belle in Disney's Beauty and the Beast as Nicole. Which is rather interesting as she rarely does much that isn't reprising Belle. And I'm sure if Paige O'Hara actually managed to see this special back when it aired, she said, Yup, definitely only voicing Belle from now on! Except for Angela in Enchanted. And we didn't just have one Disney princess in this, as Jody Benson, voice of Ariel, is Lene. You might also be super shocked to hear that they get Jody Benson and Paige O'Hara to both sing a song in this. But probably most important of all, we've got Clint Howard as Tug. Wow, you guys gotta try this. Pencil. Oh yeah, and Nancy Cartwright, who a couple of you might have heard in The Simpsons before, voicing Todd. And Nancy Cartwright was also one of the producers on this, which is probably how they're able to get the majority of this voice cast. As Nancy Cartwright and Colin Slater both have ties to Scientology, that's probably how he got her involved, and then she used her connections to get most of the actors. That seems to be the best guess of why this happened, anyway. And now, let's get into how we even have a copy of this stupid movie to talk about these days. As Rhapsody Street Kids has never gotten a release past its original WB airings, and as far as I know, no one bothered to record it off TV back then, it was lost for quite a few years. Until the founder of the Lost Media Wiki, Diacate, contacted Colin Slater about getting a copy. Which he provided. Eventually. After apparently charging him double what he originally said it would, disappearing for a while, telling him he couldn't give it to him but was gonna keep the money anyway, Colin Slater eventually gave Diacate what he paid for. 
after being called out on it a few more times. Colin Slater only has one other credit to his name on IMDb, which is for Wolf Tracer's Dinosaur Island. Guess they were really proud of that one. I mean, why wouldn't they be? This one also has Mark Hamill in it. I'm guessing Hamill recorded for both these movies around the same time, you know, before he could actually see what they looked like. I just love imagining what any of the cast thought when they saw the fruits of their labors on this. I mean, if they actually managed to catch it before it disappeared for years. Now, before we finally get into the movie proper, I want to bring up the diluted website for this special, which said of it, every now and then an animated program comes along that seems destined to become a classic. The Rhapsody Street Kids franchise is such a project. Wow, someone had high hopes for this. That's sad. The Rhapsody Street Kids franchise will go on to be the biggest franchise like the Birdemic franchise. Now, even though the final movie looks like animation that was never finished, believe it or not, there was actually animation tests for this. And part of these tests, which were part of a demo reel, were the only proof of this movie's existence for a while. And it actually looks a little bit better than the final product, as it's way blurrier so you can't see its awfulness quite as well. Besides that, some of the character models are noticeably different. The main character Character Ricky had short hair, stupid scarf kid, didn't have a scarf. Paige O'Hara's Nicole character was redesigned a bit, including that she now wore crop tops in the middle of winter. Also, she used to know how to fly. Well, I guess she still kinda did in the final, just didn't get quite as much airtime. She still had absolutely no weight to her, though. Of course, nothing in this movie seems to have weight. Another interesting fact from the earlier, less bug-eyed, but certainly more evil-eyed version of this special was that they were named the Bash Street Kids instead of the Rhapsody spelt all stupid-like kids. Electronic toys, video games, balls and bats. I saw a scooter with a motor that was flat. Oh, he raps. Good one. There's a comic that featured the Bash Street Kids, though, which is the most likely reason for the name change. So, before this movie even starts properly, we're hit by a sea of incompetent stupid. There's a few select elements in the movie that have interlaced lines running through them, like the snowflakes in the background and the wondrous Comic Sans titles as they fly in. No wonder they couldn't pull off 3D animation. They couldn't even handle text flying onto the screen. And whenever there's a more complicated camera movement, it feels like the cameraman is drunk. You know, despite this being animation. <laughs> Is this a horror movie? The answer is yes. As the special starts, a bus, which may be on fire, lets some kids out, including Ricky's original character model, which is not what he looks like in the so-called finished product. But watch him really book it during this first shot. These kids are apparently just trying really hard to escape the movie. Because all the toy stores are looking mighty packed. Yeah, sure, those clip art pine trees are absolutely seamless. Look at the way Ricky Bot walks. His magic feet just dip down into the ground while he sort of floats along his path. Now let me attempt the Ricky walk here. Perfect. Oh, uh, look at this soulless robot trying to look at a snowflake. Does not compute. Look into my dead eyes. My blinking is quite unsettling. Wow, some big choices of what he could buy at the store. Clip art animals or crappy untextured 3D vehicles. Hmm, yes, this is a perfect shot as it makes Ricky look like he's a pile of crap. 
I mean in the more literal sense, since everything in this movie looks like a pile of crap at all times, figuratively. Ye old toy store? Oh, shut up. Between the Photoshop filter texture roof and the jagged edges, I don't know what I love more about this place. As Ricky only has 75 cents or something, he sad Charlie Brown robots his way home to his classic New York Skyline poster. So he's on the moon now? Let me bend down and pick up this human toy. Mama, I miss you big. When you were around, you'd keep my posters from growing and moving around my walls. Must be that damn Rita Repulsa making her monsters grow again. Also, you'd keep the horribly confusing camera angles away that make it seem like your picture's on the other side of the room than where I was looking. You gave me this bear because of love. So I'll give this bear because of love. The animator has a nap! Hold out, animator! Oh, I'm just joking. This bear floating around Ricky's fever dream is probably some of the best looking crud in this. Anyway, that's a pillow, is it? We are then introduced to Crapsity Street Elementary, whose motto is striving for excellence. Well, it never said they achieved it. I'm glad the elementary school is spelt with the movie's stupid version of Rhapsody, yet apparently the actual street's name spells Rhapsody correctly. Keep striving for that excellence, man! Then Mommy schedules me for my own hair lady. Smithy! Hey, Nicole Duck! I mean dinosaur! <laughs> So, that's what's gonna pass for jokes around here, is it? Yeah. Let's just see what Ricky Rhymemaster can do. <laughs> wow, I'm glad Todd kind of sounds like Todd. Hey, watch me help him. Heads up, Ricky! I'm so glad they got Clint Howard to voice this character. Totally worth it. Your ice cream. How did they manage to find a clip art tree that looked even worse? This one's all pixelated and you can see part of the white background around the edges. This aired on TV. Wow, Ricky. That's not bad. You just keep telling yourself that. You're still not one of us, shrimp. <laughs> Yeah, so Todd is kind of in between Todd Flanders and Nelson. Uh-oh. Whoa! Ricky Butt Breakdown. He's also a giant compared to Stupid Scarf Boy. <sighs> Fuck my donkey. Ugh, their eyes are so dead and disgusting. They look like craters where hope falls in to die. It's for Nicole the honey. I know she's into money. Yeah, you're pretty cool, Ricky. Except for liking Nicole. Now that's gross. But not as gross as our clothing textures. That's real gross, man. And almost everyone has that exact same texture on their clothing. Class, sit down. You too, young Miss Nicole. What are her arms doing? Sit down, class! Don't make me break down! What am I doing? Oh, and her arms are apparently hollow and her hands just float around nothing depending on how she turns them. Find the ground! Pow! Hey, Ricky! Let me know any time you want to fall down again! Hey, why don't I knock you down by reminding you that you help produce this crap? Ha <laughs> ha! Hey, that hurts. Can't we please give out our presents now? I said after recess because I need a recess. No wonder she needs a break. She probably almost actually looked at one of these kids and had a heart attack. If robots can have heart attacks. Please? I don't think your parents would appreciate runny noses over vacation. Ugh. Yeah, that about sums it up. You say it's Christmas, bring on the cheer. I am going to build a snowman now. Wow, so real. 
what a good job I did! They didn't even bother to match the styles of their clip art in this scene. Then again, there's no style to their 3D abomination models either. Guess it got too warm for Nicole out in the falling snow, so she had to take her jacket off. I shall now very realistically throw a snowball as the humans do. And he died. Apparently. It's not the bread. So this was animated by alien robots who have no concept of Earth's gravity or how humans move, right? You won't get away from me! That was probably Nancy Cartwright's message to everyone she contacted to be in this movie. I'll get him for you, Todd! No one can catch the Smith man! I'll get you good, Smithy! I move like a real human boy! Even though he looks quite large, Clint Howard's tug job character apparently weighs nothing. A tug of war! <laughs> I'm betting on Smithy. This blue hair surfer dude Zeke was voiced by J.R. Horsting. You may remember him as Borg in First Contact, but probably not. He's also known for Robocop in Indian in the Cupboard, which brings us to the end of his listed acting credits. Whoa, this reeks. I want waves, not ice. Get him away from me. Hard to believe. I bring this guy up though because he was also involved in the animation and art on this movie. He also helped produce this and that other Wolf Tracer masterpiece. Really a jack of all trades, that Zeke Borgo cop. Look out! Ice zombies! Watch what I can do! I'll watch you, Nicole! Wow, what a creep. I see why Ricky is so obsessed with Nicole, though. Who could resist that beauty? I mean, Belle. Come on, Lene. Let's pretend we're famous skaters. I didn't know there were power lines that were famous skaters. <laughs> Yeah, you see, the thing with the movement in this is that it's too realistic. Give me back my sandwich! Dude, you've had that sandwich since the beginning of the day. Just hurry up and shove it up your butt or however you eat without a mouth. Mm, 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 mm. Is he making out with the sandwich? No! The stakes have never been lower. Anyway, this scene is obscene. You are back where you belong. I said get off! Zeke brought destroy, kill all humans. Error, humans not found. Oh, hey, that is so cool. I wish I had one. Here. I brought that for the grab bag, Nicole. I'd have thought that Belle and Ariel would have a stronger friendship than this. Get him away from me! That means he likes you. So I'm not gonna stop him if he gropes and harasses you. It means he likes you, so it's okay! That's no good. This is such a great time of year, Miss Parmington. How are you and our little angels doing? I'd look for myself, but I don't know how to actually look at them. I hope you have a really, really happy holiday. I'm having a great day because my spine seems to be broken, which means I'm getting a wonderful view of the ceiling. Anyway, time for me to slowly back out of this movie and never appear again. Wow, what a pointless man. Remember, things in order teaches you good skills. I guess those skills come later. That was terrifying. Please do not attempt to show emotion ever again! Ricky then goes outside to have a minor breakdown, and Scarf Boy tries to get away after shitting his pants. This is from the heart. Merry Christmas, Nicole! Have you 
lost your mind? I can't believe the materialistic girl didn't like the gift I gave that had sentimental value to me and not her. You might be smart with books, but you sure are stupid. Is she smart with books? Because from the looks of it, she should be a few grades ahead of you instead of being in the same class. Then Ricky glides himself into oncoming traffic. Instead of getting that super important bear back, guess he didn't really care about his dead mom bear that much. Ricky, who gave you that candle? Oh, that is a really mean thing to say. Asking who gave you a candle is mean? Saying she hates gifts in front of the people, giving them and throwing them into the dumpster, that's sort of mean, but not on inquiry about candle levels. Now, I'd ask about why the candle is creating a giant lens flare outside the house. Though if I did, I'd have to apologize for my insensitivity. Oh crap, it's the crazy grandma. She's quite mad. <laughs> that was a good one. Oh. <laughs> See, for the political liberals, it is nowadays. Hard to argue with that. Dear Santa, send toys to all the kids in my class, even Nicole. Even if she turned down my boner bear. I gave her my special bear. The mama gave me before the angels took her. They took her to a much better place, which is anywhere that isn't here. Your friend, Ricky Rogers. My friend, Ricky Rogers? I don't know any Ricky Rogers. Oh, my baby must be sending letters. Well, it's nice that someone finally sounds how the movie looks. Darn, and this movie had physics down so well before this. Guess Ricky has no peripheral vision either. Then again, he's got larger problems right now, like the air apparently turning into hard-to-move-in sludge. What do you think Santa will bring you this year? <laughs> Hopefully he's gonna bring you a back brace. That laughter is so stupid. <laughs> That's so last year. I suppose the tooth fairy still comes for your baby teeth. <laughs> well, she's clearly possessed. Let's salt and burn her remains. I wish walking wasn't such a struggle. Then again, she is a fish woman. Look at me, look and you'll see the best kid in the world. Well, the song is kind of stupid, but Paige O'Hara's vocals are good, so this goes together about as well as most of the Rhapsody Kids voice talent in its animation. <laughs> Honey, is something bothering you? I wanna be part of Santa's world! Lene's mother shows off the power of her hair clipping through her shoulder. And when you really think about it, isn't that what Christmas is really all about? Nicole finds Ricky's tell-all story to Santa in her front yard, which instantly makes her good. Oh no, Ricky. What have I done? Gotta love that sweet character development. Isn't that what Santa does? I sure hope not. Oh, see, for the political now. She doesn't get it. How could anyone not get that? Oh, Christmas. Oh. Wow, I understand Christmas. Because that's all I understood in that. Great Grandma does at least give one piece of solid advice. How? We're looking for Ricky's bear. I've got to find it. The poor little princess is turned into a garbage man. Well, I know you are, but what am I? A garbage man? Oh, I know you are, but what am I? A garbage man? Wow. 
You guys gotta try this. <laughs> you know, I never hoped to see a sillier laugh animation than Dingo, but Rhapsody Street Kids Break Your Back laugh might have <laughs> beat. Don't forget to take a bath before Christmas. Otherwise, your body might rot away like mine. You girls stink enough as it is. Come on, let's get out of here before someone sees us with them. Or smells us with them. Smell you later. Those guys are so lame. Almost as lame as carrying a sandwich around for days, which both Scarf Boy and Brat Simpson have made out with at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I love creeping out creepy girls. In a town full of creeps, you are the creepiest. Guess that's something to be proud of. I can so blackmail you guys. So this is when they decide to kill him and see if anyone can tell the difference between a living and dead person in this horrid little universe, right? Do you want to find the bear or not? I don't know, do any of you? Unless your school brings us garbage into the basement, I don't think you're looking in the right spot. Then again, I don't know if I could really put that past these people. Oh no, he made Todd's and Munz break his own arm and bleed his own blood. Yes! I saved you again, my friend! This guy needs help. Or to be put down. Stinky Smithy chasing a skating sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Next place to check for garbage after your school's basement is apparently the junkyard. You don't typically see regular garbage mixed in with vehicles, but hey, there is a toilet in there, so maybe they should stick their head in it to see if the bear's in there. Or if Ricky's in there. A couple guard dogs then remember that they exist so that our heroes can show off the fact that the animators have never bothered to see what someone running looks like in their lives. Sandwich, I choose you! <laughs> oh, look! There it is! The one random piece of smaller garbage in this entire place! We sure are lucky! Now is not the time to be a girl. Can you get hung by your scarf, please? Thank you. Thanks. We gotta super choppy our way out of here! Even though I thought we just escaped the junkyard slash landfill! Plus, we probably could've just left through the opening we came in from. Let me pass you this bear in a manner a human totally would! Nicole, this was a gift for you. But doesn't it mean a lot to you? Yes, and so does friendship. I hated my mom, that's why I'm just using this crap bear to try and score some points with you. I mean, really, you think me dropping my letter on your yard was an accident? Come on, that was so obvious. I mean, if we don't hook up soon, I'm gonna get so desperate, I'm gonna have to use a sex doll. Oh, oh, sorry, I forgot what you were for a second, Nicole. Back at Lene's house, we see the gift both her parents are hoping to get for Christmas this year is to have some feet. I can remember you, Robert. As a little boy, you had such a hard time falling asleep sleep on Christmas Eve. Wow, that sure is a generic story. Thanks, Mom. Anyway, I think Robert just died and is just kind of swaying in the wind. Hey, daughter, what's the matter? You not enjoying your empty cavernous room? And this is for those of you who weren't grossed out enough by the disgusting blinking in this movie. He has no eyelids and he must blink. Santa's on his way. Do you see Santa? Oh, I knew Santa was a mass of liquid droplets in the sky. I finally believe in him or something. Guess that was a plot point. And there will always be a Santa if I believe in Santa. Daddy, tell me you believe in Santa too. Also, do you believe in the rest of my legs? I want them to be real too. <laughs> Here you go, honey. <laughs> this movie doesn't deserve to have these people too. 
It's Christmas! By the time I got out of the mall, the cleaners had already closed. So I bought you a new suit. Glad she just told him what his crappy, lazy present was. Sure, he could have opened it, but why put the animators through all that work when they put in such a good job already? No surprises there. That's how I get most of my suits. <laughs> well, it took till over 33 minutes into it, but we finally got Mark Hamill in his big role. Yay! Hamill's character is a really interesting one, too, because he doesn't know how to move his arms from his hips. He seriously stays in this pose for the entire scene. Merry Christmas! I guess Santa I'd be able to look you guys in the eyes this year. Guess he failed me again! Oh, our princess has my good looks and your spending habits. She truly is the last Jedi, and maybe she should be the last. <laughs> This is what Ricky asked Santa for. Mommy, Daddy, may I go visit a friend? I opened one of my presents on one side of it only, as the kids do. I'm done. <laughs> I made a terrible mistake, so I ran over here as fast as I could. Scene here, her going as fast as she could. But thankfully, Ricky got his video box. Now he can creepily smile at it, cause that's what you do with the video boxes. Now, you might think that the video box is a game console, but I'm pretty sure it's just a VCR from the looks of it. Well, I've got the perfect tape for him to pop in. <laughs> Oops, I mean... Oh, 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 my back. No wonder Nicole gave that to a merry crap mess. I think I see something in the backyard. Now, here's a question that never gets answered. Is this supposed to be a real pony or not? They don't ever interact with it, so you never really get to know. Now, in most cartoons, it looking completely dead and not moving would be your answer to this question. But not in Rhapsody Street Kids! It really is the gift that keeps on giving. Lene probably asked for a skirt not made of tissue paper for Christmas, but that'd be too practical so she didn't get it. Belief in Santa is where we start, but what matters is what's in our heart. I believe in Santa! Oh, ho, ho, ho. You know, you kids believing in me makes me less real, so screw off! Do you know what, Nicole? I never stopped believing in Santa. What the hell? I could understand that. Is she becoming more intelligible or am I just losing my mind? Probably a little of both. <laughs> Christmas! <laughs> That's more like it. Great Grandma, you always know just what to say. I guess, since you can pretend she said whatever you want. I think Nicole's mother has the correct response to Great Grandma on her face. Hey! What's that? Wow! Wow, it's the shadow of Clip Art Santa on his sleigh. I do believe in Clip Art! I do believe in Clip Art! <laughs> Well, not anymore. I am so proud of you, princess. You broke your neck for me, and that's all I really wanted for Christmas. Dead! The end! What a delightful little special. I think I just died inside. The credits let us know that there was a soundtrack CD available, which apparently was released, but it doesn't really show its ties to the Rhapsody Street kids. As the CD was called Through a Child's Eyes, but there is an old archive site that does link this CD to the Rhapsody Street Kids. My name's Jenna, and I'll be back with the Easter Bunny. Like hell you will! 
The massive success of this special resulted in the immediate cancellation of the Rhapsody Street Kids Easter follow-up. And it is a real shame we don't get to see the story of Jenna, you know, Lene's sister. I was truly wondering what her deal was. It was pretty ballsy of them to declare that there'd be a sequel given what they produced here. It's almost like putting all your money into the voice cast and leaving nothing for anything else was a bad idea or something. Because then all you're left with is some decent voice work in some spots on top of crap, and no one's gonna want to watch that unless they want to stare into the eyes of the abyss. Or get a good laugh at how incompetent it is, but I think we can all agree, oh, <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> now where'd this movie get that candle? Oh, damn it, I went too far, right at the end. You know, I don't think a wolf traced any of this. A wolf would do a better job.